Hey guys, it's Hayden here making another video. Today I am going to share with you guys what's been going on, how I've been feeling, what I've been processing. Um, there's been a lot of moving parts recently and um, we're going to dive into them today. So um, for any of you who are new to my channel, I mostly focus on mental health, um, psychosis recovery, um, spirituality, as well as any other kind of process or uh, development that I'm working on. Um, just kind of whatever crosses my mind, I just kind of talk about on here. So feel free to uh, check out my other videos if you find this video interesting. So... Today, what I'm going to talk about is, like I mentioned, some of the stuff that I've been working on and stuff, um, some of my other developmental processes. So as you can see, I've changed my setup. Um, I've gotten some new tools um, and kind of set up my office. I've been living in this new house for, I don't know, five, six months now. So it's taken us a little while to get settled in, but... I finally kind of got the feeling to um, to kind of make my office nice and to to get it in a in a place that I want it to be. So hopefully uh, hopefully this will be a good uh, a good setup moving forward. Um, I have also kind of um, moved to um, going to school again. So I am now in grad school to become a counselor. Um, it's something that I've wanted to do for a long time now, but I just didn't have the idea to um, where to go, what program to do, and so I kind of figured that out. Um, I know that I want to be a counselor. I know that's something that I want in my repertoire, and it's going to give me a career path that I can kind of lean on. So that's something that I'm doing now. So I'm looking forward to continue studying and learning about that. Um, I'll be done in 2026, so that's going to be a while, but, um, you know, it's something that I've always wanted to do. Um, I also applied for a management position at my job, did not get the position, um, but not getting it made me realize that I do want to be building something. I do want to be growing into something, um, and so I... I want to dedicate more time towards things that are going to help me grow as a um, as an individual but also as a professional um, and so I, I want to kind of dedicate more time towards building um, what I want to build so and uh, podcasts and YouTube videos are something that I think are part of that building process so um so those are kind of like the more logistic things that have been going on. Um, as far as my process goes, I think there's been um, a lot of pressure that I've been putting on myself, and this is not a, a new thing. This is kind of a reoccurring theme with me of putting pressure on myself to kind of um, produce content with a certain expectation or a certain standard or a certain kind of um, vision of how I think it should be. And, um, and it's not based on like a place that makes me feel um, expansive or uh, feel powerful or feel like motivated to move forward. It's very crippling. It's very based in perfectionism. Um, it's very much based on the fear of rejection and so I found that that kind of process and that kind of thought pattern has led me to led to stifling my creativity and led me to feel uncomfortable sharing and feel very um, hyper conscious of what I do end up sharing. Um, and so I'm going to work on um, this is something I've been working on for a while, but um, I think feel like I've I've had a lot of growth and understanding uh, through some of the things that I've experienced recently. Um, in, um, 
growth and I, I want to basically like feel more comfortable just expressing myself and like not necessarily putting pressure on a, on a specific way that I'm going to be um, presenting or sharing. So, um, yeah, I think a lot of times we get so caught up in the, in the process or so caught up in like the destination rather of expecting us to get somewhere and then we just get stuck because we're like, oh, it needs to look this specific way. And when it doesn't look that way, we feel bad. We feel like it's 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 uh it's not gonna, you know, do what we wanted to do or align with something um, that we think we should have. And so a lot of the, um, I think real growth really comes from having and I at least like what I'm focusing on is having an idea of like how I want the work that I do how I want I how I want to feel when I do it and so focusing on on the feeling that it's going to create within me focusing on that feeling while I'm producing it focusing on that feeling while I am um, editing it or interacting with people or creating things and focusing on that feeling throughout the whole process I think that is more important than um, having a vision of how exactly things should or should not be. Um, Because it's it's the connection, it's the the intent, the energy behind the work that you're doing that's going to carry through, not the specific words you use, not the specific video format that you use, not the... um, you know, the type of editing software that you use to some degree, the quality of the video and the quality of the audio makes a big difference because if it's bad audio and bad video, it's probably not going to get watched. Um, there'll be some people who watch, but most people are used to watching pretty high quality videos and audio. And so there's a certain standard there, but beyond that, it's mostly just the energy behind the, the content and the work. I feel like everything else will kind of fall into place. Um, so that's my focus now. What kind of energy do I want to feel? What kind of energy do I want to move into more and explore? And how how do I want to grow? Because um, at the end of the day, whatever we end up doing, um, no matter whether it's um, you know whether it's making videos or um, or playing sports or reading books, there has to be something in it for you to gain, for you to continue doing it. So if it's not benefiting you, you're not going to want to do it anymore. If you're doing something out of a, a feeling like you should do it just because it's something that you, you feel like is going to get you somewhere or make you a better person or get, make you happy, um, it's not going to work. Um, because the happiness is in the process. So if you're not in the process and you're not enjoying the process of making the video, the process of reading the book, the process of playing the sports, then, um, when is it, when's the happiness going to come? Cause that's not a life is not really a destination based existence experience because the destination is never guaranteed. So the only thing that is guaranteed is the experience itself. So how, how can we tap into that? How can I tap into that? How could I incorporate that into all different aspects of my life? There are certain tasks I don't enjoy doing. I don't particularly enjoy um, doing chores when I have uh, a full workload of, uh, of stress on my plate. You know, if I'm, if I'm working a full week and I also have other duties on the side and I'm feeling kind of spread thin, probably not going to really want to do the dishes, not going to want to do, um, the chores that are kind of menial. Um, and so sometimes we got to do things that aren't necessarily enjoyable. Um, and, uh, being present with that, as much as we can, can be helpful. But there are some things that are pretty much always enjoyable for us, um, or more likely to be enjoyable, 
like playing guitar for me or playing, you know, playing hockey, playing tennis. Those are usually enjoyable because they're not something that happen all the time. And it's something that I do particularly to have fun with. So having those little moments in life, I think are extremely important. Um, those are, those are, I would, I would kind of designate those more as like self care. Um, and then there's also a practice or a discipline that, um, for me is important. So a process of uh, personal development or improvement. So there's, there's a, something that is, is designed to be there in your life to help you with growth. Um, so for me, that would be something like my YouTube channel that helps me grow, that helps me understand myself, that gives me perspective on things by sharing, um, by interacting with, with other people and seeing comments. Um, therapy is one of those things for me, um, something that helps me grow. Um, to some degree, meditation, um, when, I, when I do sit down or just personal reflection or um, contemplation. Um, there's a few other things. I do ice baths. Um, I've been doing those kind of more often recently. And those really help me to kind of um, connect with my body and feel that. Lifting is also another way that I connect with myself and grow personally. I explore my body more. I understand how it moves, how it works, um, how to lift correctly so I'm not injuring myself further. Um, well, hopefully not further. Hopefully I'm not injured. But right now I don't have much pain in my body. Um, but that those things are, are tools for, for, for development. And those are things that have more of a practice aspect to it that is focused on development. Whereas like video games and, and um, hockey and tennis, they have some development aspects to them. But a lot of it is based around, um, a lot of it is just based around play and experimentation. And not so much with, a, with an intentional... Um, practice a reflection or or really like looking into um into myself and and seeing the patterns and and recognizing them and tweaking and adjusting and experimenting and um kind of growing and developing on that um, those are really um kind of deep practices for me personally so i've been working on all those all that stuff um that's kind of where I'm at right now is, is processing, developing, growing, um, looking at different aspects of my life and uh, sinking my teeth into them. So I think developing, having developed a foundation that is pretty solid has allowed me to explore and to grow and to um, venture off into different areas of life and... Um, kind of expand my horizons and so for those of you who like might be in a recovery process like after psychosis or after um, something difficult or traumatic know that just because like you're struggling right now and it's difficult doesn't mean that you can't um, develop a foundation that allows you to expand further so how far that allows you to expand is going to depend on the individual. So each person is going to be a little bit different. Um, but know that like the main, the main focus after having a psychosis or having some kind of traumatic event is going to be to how it's going to be how to basically lay a foundation that's going to allow me to grow from here. So there's a few things that um, are really important for me personally in my development um, for that foundation. And I just want to remind you that I'm not a therapist and this is not like meant to replace therapy. So this is just my personal experience. Uh, but what was helpful for me was really, um, having, um, a strong support network, first of all. So having a therapist, having, um, people that I can go to when I'm not feeling well, um, and know that like, they'll be there to support me if I need that. Another one is, um, kind of confidence. And that's something that I had to like build over time. And, and some of the confidence that I gained was mostly just from time passing. Um, but also as I got kind of comfortable to, to like, for example, after feeling really depressed after the psychosis process, um, 
gradually, like as I kind of lifted out of that depression and um, it wasn't as like overbearing, I started to kind of immerse myself back into, after the first one, I immersed myself back into um, college. So I started going back to school and working on that. So it gave me something to kind of focus on, but also to like push my development forward a little bit. Um, and it was uncomfortable at first, for sure. Like I felt very exposed, very vulnerable, but kind of pushing that level of comfort to a degree um, and to the degree that I was able to to handle and recover from. Um, think about it like lifting. If you go to the gym and you try to pick up like 225 um, and you haven't like built the foundation, you don't have the form, the technique, the strength to do that, you're probably going to injure yourself. And so think about the psychosis recovery process, um, or at least like for me, when I was thinking about the psychos psychosis recovery process, looking back, um, make sure when you do kind of go out and start to interact with, um, with the world and stuff like that, um, or you start to push your boundaries, start to um, fo focus mostly on stuff. Well, I guess don't push yourself too hard to the point where um, you're completely exhausted the next day. So if you feel like being out for two hours is like difficult for you, then um, then just do like an hour and a half, you know, or do an hour. Um, just start with what you can handle you want it to be a little bit uncomfortable, but not so uncomfortable that you're completely overstimulated and it's a traumatic experience. So build gradually, take smaller steps. So if you haven't gone out socially and you're worried about like how that might look like, uh, maybe start with some people that you already know, um, start in a place that maybe you are already familiar with. So it's a little bit less intimidating and over time you can kind of gradually expose yourself to new situations, new people, um, over time, or go to a, con a controlled environment, like a support group. That's a great place to kind of experiment and, um, get your feet wet with socialization as well as, um, getting out of the house and interacting with other people. And, um, so it's, it's all about just taking baby steps. Um, and I even not even talking about psychosis, it's the same thing with when I started lifting, um, I started lifting about a year or two ago, and um, at first, I, I would go on by myself and lift and try different things. I was trying like different lifting plans and stuff, but I kept having lower back pain, um, so I'd take like two weeks off, go back, and the low back pain would come back again. So I was like, all right, clearly I'm doing something wrong. Um, I clearly need help with this. So I um, hired a personal trainer. And it was expensive, you know, like it kind of pushed me financially, but I knew that it was something that I would need um, to learn in order to keep myself safe. And it's something that I could use the rest of my life. So it's it's not something that would just be like wasted money. It's something it's like kind of investing in myself and my future. Um, and so when I was starting lifting, it was not something that was um, like with, with, uh, with my trainer, it wasn't something like, Oh, well, like we're going to go hit the weights like really hard. The first like month to two months was really, really boring. Like it was just like really lightweight, really focused on technique and form. Um, I even like talked to him. I was like, Hey, like this is not like, this is not scratching the itch I was looking for. This is not like, like I'm used to just like going to the gym and feeling the pump right afterwards, like feeling like I did something. Cause like feeling like I did a workout is part of the stress relief and part of like the self care for me. Um, cause it, it relieves a lot of stress when you, when you lift hard. Um, and he's like, yeah, uh, totally understand. And, uh, the reason we're not lifting hard right now is because we're developing form and technique. And so if, if you lift heavy and you don't have the right form or technique, you're going to injure yourself. So I want to make sure that you're in a place where you can sustainably lift before we add the weight on. And so the same applies for, um, for lifting. Even if you're not in a recovery process, if you're learning something new, it's all about starting from the foundation and building up. And I'm still working on the foundations when I lift. I'm still working on my technique and form. Every lift I go into, I'm focusing on, okay, how does this feel? How did my last set feel? Do I feel any pain anywhere? Is there anything I can, I can adjust on the next set? 
And so it's very process oriented and it can be, um, can be really easy to kind of get caught in like the future orientation of like, oh, well, I want to be over here and why am I not there yet? Um, and that's kind of the mentality that I had when I started lifting. Cause I was like, I just want to lift the heavy stuff and just feel really like, really like I had a good workout afterwards. Um, instead of really focusing on the process and focusing on how is my body moving? How is my body interacting with the weight in the angle that I'm lifting it at in the form that I have with my body? What muscles are being engaged? Am I using the full range of motion? really focusing in on that aspect of lifting makes the process so much more enjoyable and it also teaches you so much more because you're learning about your your body you're learning about how it moves you're learning about how to lift um and that leads to growth both like physically on a muscular level but also on a on a an awareness level a perception level a body relationship level like mind body relationship and so Again, if we're talking about recovery, I think a lot of people that um, that are trying to recover or working on recovery, they end up getting caught in the um, in focusing on what where they want to go or where they wish they were instead of focusing on hey, how does my body feel right now? What can I work on right now? What is something that I can do right now that will help me get to where I want to go. And so really focusing on the present focused goals that can be measured and that can be applied right now. As soon as, as soon as you start to go to the future and wish that you were somewhere else, you're no longer engaging with the process. You're engaging with something that does not exist. The future does not exist. What exists is right here and right now. Goals are great to have, but if they are not connected with present oriented goals, they will not produce results. So it can seem daunting to be like, oh my gosh, like I have to do work to get somewhere. Um, and it can feel kind of disempowering to feel like, oh, well, I have been thinking about the future and I have been disengaged from, um, from the present oriented narrative. Remember that it, it's, it's not about blaming yourself. It's not about like, oh my gosh, like I'm terrible for doing that. Um, because like, that's, that's also not helpful. Um, it's, it's also not something that's going to get you where you want to go. So Understand that with these kinds of things, when we look to the future and we wish that we were somewhere else, a lot of it comes from from feeling pain and feeling very, very disempowered and feeling like overwhelmed and scared. And there's so many different reasons why we can sort of look to the future instead of focusing on what we can work on right now. Um, because it is scary to kind of put yourself out there and to admit that like, hey, like maybe I, I know nothing. Maybe I, I don't know how to lift. Maybe I like I actually am, am not very um, knowledgeable in this field. So it takes a lot of humility to be like, you know what? Like I, I really don't know and I, I might need some help with this. And maybe I'm not as far as long as I thought. Um, and uh, I, I just need to work on building the foundation. And that takes a lot of humility. And that also takes a lot of, um, yeah, it's, it's not an easy process. But in another way, it's, it's much easier because then you start to feel like, oh, well, now I'm actually working on something. And then as you start to work on those things that like, you know, you know are contributing to your growth in the future you know you're you're basically like paying money into the bank um and investing in stock for your future and so it might seem daunting and scary and humiliating humili humiliating at first um especially in the beginning and especially like when you're when you're really um 
like in the very early stages of growing in the field that you're trying to grow in, it can be very um, frustrating in some ways because you might not get it. It feels clumsy. Um, you know, when I was lifting, like my back would start to hurt or like different things would hurt and we'd have to like put less weight on and go back to the technique and form. Um, so it's kind of a frustrating process because it, you know, it's like, oh, well, we just went up and wait and now we're like, we're going down again. But know that like the the results will come with time. It's it's not about getting somewhere and, and it's fine to to have those goals and to like to be like, oh man, like I really am looking forward to when I can lift that or like when I can get to that point. But know that like the journey itself is just as or if not more important than the actual destination. Because the the reason that getting to the destination is so rewarding is because it's a milestone of all the work and hard effort that you put in to get there. And so um, a lot of people who maybe just like wish that they were somewhere else um, or wish they would get to the result without like putting in the work, um, you know, you, you don't get to the, you might get to the result like temporarily or superficially, but you haven't done the work to get there sustainably. So you have to like grow in a way that allows that to remain a persistent experience to some degree. So for example, like when I go to the gym, I can consistently lift 225 um, for a deadlift, not, not a bench press. I'm not that strong, but like 225, like for sure I can do, you know, like every time. And that's because I build up to that point. I have the technique. I have the form. Um, I don't injure myself at that weight. Um, and so, like, that's something I had to build up to. I could not even lift. I could not deadlift from the floor before. I had to have it lifted up because it hurt my back too bad. So for a while, just getting it off the floor um, was something I was working towards. You know, just just not even that much weight, just um, you know, 135 off the floor would hurt my back. So eventually we increased the weight to 225, um, lifted off the floor. And then gradually as my range of motion and strength increased, um, we were able to go down to the floor and then I had to drop the weight again because it's a extended range of motion. Um, and so, you know, I had to build up the weight again and I, I, you know, got up to 225. I got over 225. For a while, I was close to 300, um, but I haven't been consistent, so I'm back closer to um, 225, 250-ish now. Um, but I'm sustainably able to, to be there, and that's that's something that you have to, to grow and develop over time. Um, it's it's. I know I'm just talking about lifting, but this is a metaphor that can be applied to any any field or any kind of development process that you're trying to work on. Um, including recovery from mental health um, or working through mental health. It's always one step at a time. It's always one goal at a time. So, um, I know that... um, I guess I just want to like send my heart out to you guys because um, I know that being in a place of darkness and a place of of not knowing or feeling um, kind of disempowered is is difficult and it's not fun. Um, and I really wish that there was. Um, more of a support network for people who are, are struggling in life. Um, my hope one day is that, um, that we'll be much more supportive of one another. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I really feel for you guys. Um, 
you know, even if your life's going well, I'm sure there's, you know, life's not always easy. So I, I just want to acknowledge that and um, send my love to you guys. And speaking of community, there is something that I am working on um, and I'm still working on it and I'm still thinking about it to see like how I want to implement it and how I want to um, kind of roll it out. But feel free to let me know what you guys think about this idea. Um, I am thinking of developing a Discord channel that would allow you guys to interact with one another because I know there's not that many support networks out there for psychosis specifically. And this community will be open to like, you don't have to have, you, you don't have to have had a psychosis to um, participate in this channel, but that's kind of like my main audience, I feel like. And so that's kind of why I wanted to, um, I guess, open it up specifically for that. Um, but, you know, I might add more channels to the Discord for different types of conversation. But um, I just because I, I, I'm able to interact with you guys to a degree on YouTube, but it's only through comments. Um, and having a Discord channel would allow me to interact with you guys. Um, but also allow you guys to interact with one another um, and be able to connect and share stories and be able to um, kind of maybe meet people and um, develop a support network for for you guys. Um, so that's something I'm working on. Um, there's a few features that I kind of have developed or I'm thinking of implementing through the Discord, um, and I, I don't want to share them right now, but just know that I am working on something. And if you guys think that would be great and helpful, um, then let me know in the comments below. Um, and I will continue to, to work on that. Um, but other than that, I think that's all I have to share for today. Um, my goal is to share more often, um, share more freely and not necessarily have a set um, topic that I cover each day. Um, it's going to be kind of like a more podcast slash like just me sharing my thoughts kind of sessions. Um, I don't, I don't think that the, um, the sitting down and uh, making a structured video, it really fits my, uh, my style of communication. So um, we'll see how this goes. And uh, I uh, thank you guys for all tuning in. Uh, appreciate you guys and uh, sending you all the love and I will catch you in uh, my future videos. Bye for now.